In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. Morning to everyone joining us at home for Mass, hoping you're all well. I'm offering this Mass for Pedro Osua, and we now ask Leah to light the second of our candles on our Advent wreath. And meanwhile, we ask God's blessing. Heavenly Father, look upon us with love and fill us with the Spirit of Jesus. Help us to love you and protect us during this week as we await the coming of our Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our lives are constantly filled with the ups and downs of everyday living, challenging us to keep focused on the God who comes to save us. As we begin our celebration together, we pause to ask now for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the light and glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring mercy and forgiveness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent John to prepare your way by proclaiming repentance. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your dress of sorrow and distress. Put on the beauty of the glory of God forever. Wrap the cloak of integrity of God around you. Put the diadem of the glory of the eternal on your head. Since God means to show your splendor to every nation under heaven. Since the name of God gives you forever will be peace through integrity and honor through devotedness. Arise, Jerusalem. Stand on the heights and turn your eyes to the east. See your sons resembled from west and east at the command of the Holy One. Jubilant that God has remembered them. Though they left you on foot with enemies for an escort, now God brings them back to you like royal princes carried back in glory. For God has decreed the flattening of each mountain of the everlasting hill the filling of the valleys to make the ground level, so that Israel can walk in safety under the glory of God. And the forests and every fragrant tree will provide shade for Israel at the command of God. For God will guide Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and integrity for escort. 
the word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Every time I pray for all of you, I pray with joy, remembering how you have helped to spread the good news from the day you first heard it, right up to the present. I am quite certain that the one who began this good work in you will see that it is finished when the day of Christ Jesus comes. God knows how much I miss you all, loving you as Christ Jesus loves you. My prayer is that your love for each other may increase more and more and never stop improving your knowledge and deepening your perception so that you can always recognize what is best. This will help you to become pure and blameless and prepare you for the day of Christ, when you will reach the perfect goodness which Jesus Christ produces in us for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of the lands of Iturea and Trachonitis, 
Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened and rough roads made smooth, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hopefully you may have seen the recent news that Archbishop Beck Catholic College was awarded the grade of good by Ofsted at their recent inspection. I've just joined the governing body and the Ofsted feedback meeting seemed like a good first meeting to get an idea of understanding where the school is up to. All of the staff were rightly pleased with the verdict, which reflects the hard work they have put in over recent years. And it was a pleasure to be at a meeting when good news about the school was given. It's also a good start for the new head teacher, Paul Sterling, who takes over when Paul Dickinson retires at the end of this term. After the meeting, I got to talking to some of the staff about the way Ofsted does its inspections. When Ofsted first started inspecting, a school would have months of notice. Now they have a couple of days at most. Generally, I prefer the latter system of very little notice because the stress of waiting for the inspection to happen was intense. Staff were sometimes burned out by the time the inspectors arrived. I was reminded of the times when I was observed doing my teacher training, and both times the inspectors turned up without my knowledge because of a communication mix-up. I was concerned, but each time the inspector said you get a more accurate picture of what someone's like if they're not expecting you. During Advent, our refrain is Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, but that can lack sincerity if Jesus' second coming is something we're dreading, like waiting for the call from Ofsted. If we live Advent with a sense of foreboding, this is at odds with what our attitude should be. Instead of something to fear, the Lord's second coming should be something we anticipate and look forward to. If we need an image of what Jesus' return is going to be like, the parable of the prodigal son, or to give it its more accurate title, the forgiving father, tells us all we need to know. The welcome extended to the son is what awaits each one of us when we come before the Lord, humbly admitting our mistakes. And so we needn't fear Jesus' return. While I mention forgiveness, I'd like to tell you of the Parish Advent Reconciliation Services taking place on the 15th of 16th of December, along with the first confessions of our First Communion children. Confessing our sins, leaving them behind, and receiving the Lord's forgiveness is one of the ways, best ways we can make our Advent preparations full of the joy so that we can anticipate our celebration of the Lord's birth. Please stand. We pray the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Recognising God's constant care for us, we are confident that he will hear our prayers. that the church may be a herald of the presence of God to all people through a ministry of forgiveness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That the peoples of the world may repent of their sinfulness and turn to their God for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer the political prisoners and those imprisoned by their own sinfulness may be set free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That each of us here today may take sufficient time to be mindful of what God is asking of us, so that we may be faithful to the way of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, in this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. We pray for the repose of the soul of Marion Meehan, whose funeral takes place this coming week. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Saving God, you are merciful and forgiving. Hear these our prayers that one day we might dwell with you in everlasting glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May 
Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the things you'll get to learn about me is that I need a note that coloured if I'm to remember to announce something at the end of Mass, which is why I forgot to do the introduction to the readings today. Apologies about that. The note today that I'm about to ask to remind you is any children who'd like to take part in the Christmas morning nativity, please see Pauline, who's on the front row here at the end of Mass. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Day of 